In today's tutorial, we're going to do the Beachy Keen cover-up, an item that you can wear at the beach that gives you a bit of privacy. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do this Beachy Keen cover-up using the new Bernat Maker Fashion Yarn. I'm going to tell you about that in a, in a moment. This is a very easy cover-up. I actually have to say that this is only two panels to do and I did half of the panel just sitting at the hairdresser. This is going to go extremely fast and I think you'll love the feel of this yarn as well. Let me tell you a little bit about the yarn and then we'll dive back into the project and give you the details on being able to be successful with this pattern. The Beachy King cover is made with Bernat Maker Fashion Yarn. Now we have been working with Bernat Maker Home Deck Yarn. What is the difference between these two yarn? Absolutely nothing. There is no difference other than packaging and the styling. So it's like Bernat Blanket in many ways is that there's baby version and then home deck. There's different color palettes available depending on which one you're choosing. So the Maker Fashion is more fashion oriented and the, the one for Maker Home Deck is more home deck oriented. However, you know what? I like to be versatile so I can see this aqua being a nice a really cool idea for a beachy keen cover up as well. You can decide. This yarn is very much like a cord. It does uh, stretch and it's extremely soft made of 72% cotton and then the other part is polyester. This is a perfect item for the beach. It's almost like a little um, tube shape. It's extremely soft and it will drape beautifully once you're wearing it. So this is a little bit about this yarn. So whether you're gonna choose the Maker Home Deck or the Bernat Maker Fat that's completely up to you. You should know that the Maker Home Deck is available in larger balls than the Maker Fashion. So if you're going to substitute the Maker to Home Deck with something in the Fashion line then you just have to look at the amount of yards and make the measurements in order to do the conversion. That's completely up to you. So without further ado let's go back to the pattern and determine what we need to do today. We're now back on the pattern and you're going to be looking at her outfit and her outfit is extremely simple. I would classify this as a beginner as well because it is that simple. So there are two panels, one in the front, one in the back and then it's sewn right directly under her arm all the way down and then sewn at the top to leave a room for her neck space. So it's really quite easy to do but there is a slight difference between the front one and the back one and I'll explain that in a moment. So what you're going to be seeing is you've got like these square holes. So here is an example. I've already done one of the panels here. I'm about to do the second one to start it live on camera and then I'll finish it uh, both panels together here a little, in a little bit. So what we have here is that you can see it's going, going up with these gaps. These particular posts are not directly in line with each other. So one they're over uh, more than the other and then it comes back. So there's actually a total of four different rows in order to complete to create that kind of idea. And what we need to do is that we need to be able to finish this off perfectly so that we can uh, end this perfectly at the top. So what I would recommend is the following. So back to the pattern we have the amount of balls that you're going to need in order to complete the outfit. It's extra small to medium, large to extra large and then two to five extra large and there is all the ball counts that you're going to need. Now what you have to be conscious of this is that the length is very consistent uh, with the different sizes. So there's three different lengths but let me show you here on my little homemade diagram. So on the extra small to medium it's going to be 29 inches from this line going all the way to the bottom. We're going to start at the bottom and go all the way to the top to this line and we're going to do both panels exactly identical stopping at the same inch mark. So if it's large extra large it's going to be 31 inches and then if it's two five extra large it's going to be 33 inches. The top remainder from this point forward on both sides are slightly different from each other and in fact the, the front one here has a little bit of ne uh, neck shaping so it kind of goes up over the shoulders and attaches to the back area. So we just have to be conscious of this and then we're going to uh, start in this particular tutorial at the bottom. If it were me and I were you I would do both of these panels going to the 29 inch mark or 31 or 33, uh, uh, 33 and stop. Make sure they're both identical and then I would come back and do both of the top panels area uh, at the same time. I would that's what I would do. So in today's tutorial I'm going to get you started and then we're going to come back later in this tutorial where I'm going to show you how to finish the back and then how to finish the front. 
on camera today I will be demonstrating the extra small to medium size because the reality is is that once I get started it's actually really quite easy. It's a very easy pattern. The repeat pattern is really quite uh, just the amount of uh, stitches between each stitch is actually identical to each other. The only difference is is that we're gonna start off with a different chain. So uh, extra small to medium will be starting off with 54 chains and then the next size large to extra large is 64 and then we have the two to five extra large is starting with 80 chains. So regardless of how many chains you start with the rest of this pattern will completely fall in line so that you get the look as you see right over here. So let's get started. We're going to create an extra long tail. You'll need an eight millimeter size L crochet hook for this. This is a big hook, big yarn. It's a, it's a gonna be a fast project. So here we go. Okay, let's create a slip knot and remember what I just uh, commented to. So if it's uh, extra small to medium it's chain 54, large to extra large chain 64 and then if it's uh, two to five extra large you're chaining 80. So just chain. So one, two, three, four, five. Go all the way to the size that you wanna go and then I'll meet you back here in just a moment. So I've now just chained two fifty four. So it could, yours could be longer. So I wanna go second chain from the hook now for row number one and I wanna turn it and get to the back loop of that chain only. And ju it's just one strand, just the back loop. Once you get the first one, the rest of the back loops will appear. And we're just going to single crochet ourselves all the way down the chain. Okay, so just single crochet all the way down the chain for row number one and then row number two we're going to do the same thing and then we're going to start then the repeat pattern that goes all the way up to the height that you need to go. So please for row number one single crochet all the way across your chain. I'm coming up all the way to the end of the row and uh, the end of the chain and I have only one chain left. Okay, so that concludes the first row. So okay, so I have no more stitches left. Let's turn our work and let's go for row number two. So we all, all of them have to do this. Okay, so this is row number two. We have not started the repeat pattern and I will get into what that is when we get there. So we're gonna chain up one going into the same stitch right underneath. You are going to put another single crochet there and then one single crochet into each one of the stitches going all the way back across. So one single crochet in each stitch all the way across. I'll see you back here. We're gonna start reviewing what the repeat pattern is because now it just gets easier from this point. So I'm going up all the way across and I only have three stitches left and go into all single crochet into all of them and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull back the other sample that I'm working on because I'm do I've already done the back side. Uh, it doesn't matter which one I've done because the reality is I'm waiting it until I get both sides to my 29 inches before I finish the top uh, for each of the front and the back. So here's what it looks like at this point and let's move along. Let me show you the repeat pattern next. So here's a look at the repeat pattern for this particular project. So in one one that we're about to start is that we're going to start with a single crochet. So we're gonna do another row of single crochet and then we're going to do these trebles and you notice that there's a space in here. Okay, so we're gonna be chaining up five, skipping the first single crochet and then trebling into the next, chaining one, skipping one and treble into the next. So you're gonna go all the way across. You're then gonna single crochet yourself all the way back and then the next row you will notice that there's a chain of four and a treble is directly into the next one then chain one and skip. And this is going to cause these to jump over and then when we go to do the next one you see that you have on the outside here the gap is there. So when no matter where you are in this project so one side will have um, sorry one line will have two trebles side by side and then a gap and then the next line will have a treble and then a gap and then it will continue to start. So as long as you keep maintaining that. So when you see it like this on this side it's identically on the same on the other side. So if you follow that across let me follow that. It's the same thing over here. Okay, so as long as you keep these in balance it all completely works out. So this is row one of the repeat pattern. Okay, so it says proceed in pattern as follows. So this is row number one. There's four rows. So you'll have to do this every time you hit this one. So you chain up one and it's going to be one single crochet into each one of the stitches going across. Okay, so that is repeat row number one. Okay, so after you get all the way to number four again you'll come back to this spot and you will do it. The only difference is is that below next time you hit it there will be trebles underneath but it, you're still single crocheting into every stitch going across. 
Okay, so please do this for repeat row number one all the way across single crochet. So I'm coming up to the end of the row of repeat row or of the repeat pattern number one. So it's just single crochet all the way to the last one. Okay, so there's one more left and that's it. So let's turn our work and we're going to go to the repeat pattern row number two. So this one here we're going to start now creating those gapping spaces that you see the model wearing. So the first time we ever do it is that we're going to chain up five. So wait, in the rules of crochet when trebles are done you chain up four. Why is it asking you to chain five? Because the treble is going to count and then there's gonna be a chain one. So one, two, three, four. Here's your treble. Chain one more which is five. That's your chain one space and it will make sense then when we come back on this row um, in the next one. So you're gonna skip one stitch. Okay, so just follow it down. Skip the next stitch and treble into the next. Wrap that hook twice. Okay, going, so you're skipping one. Going to the second one over. Pull through, pull through two, two, and two. Look at the height of the stitch compared to my hand. It's substantial. This project is gonna fly fast. Once you've got that done, chain one, skip one stitch, go to the second and treble again. That's all you have to do for this round or this row. Just treble and then chain one. So trebling again, skip one and go to the next one. That's your treble, chain one, trebling again, cha skip one, second one over. So you're creating these beautiful gapping spaces just like you see here. So I want you to do that all the way across on this row which is row number two of the repeat pattern. And then we'll come back at the end of this row and I'll show you what to do next. So I'm coming up to the end of the row. I wanna show you something. So you're going to notice that you have these beautiful gaps. They all should look consistent with each other just like you see here. And I'm gonna chain one and I'm going, to, I have two stitches left. Now in this row, row number two, if you end up with the last stitch of not having a gap in between, you know that you're wrong. So you're gonna chain one and your very final stitch will be right into the last stitch. So every, uh, so we're gonna do this like that. Okay, so it's only on row number, what's it, number four that you're going to have it so that they're side by side but then there's a gap. Okay, so row number two you know your count is off and you should backtrack right now if, if both of these, if you ended up on the second last one and you didn't have room to chain one and skip one more. So that's an indication to you that something is wrong. I have to say you know, I did that twice I think in the main sample is that I got to the end and I realized I had miscounted. I had put two uh, side by side. So that's what it will look like at this moment. So let's move along to row number three of the repeat pattern. So row number three of the repeat pattern is just simply single crochet but watch. We're gonna chain up one. We're gonna come into the top of the treble and add in a single crochet there. Okay, and the next one is a chain one space. So just go into the space and just single crochet. That's it. Okay, so the treble is the next one. So go right into the stitch. The next one is right into the space. So in row number three, that's all you're going to do. So when, it, when remember what I kind of said back here on the repeat pattern of row number one, I said you'll have trebles underneath. This will be what it will look like underneath. You'll be going into the, um, the, the spaces just like you see. So please for row number three, just a single crochet either into a stitch or into a space depending on where you are. So please do that all the way down the line. So I'm coming up all the way to the end. Now remember how I told you when we did this treble we chained up five instead of four like a typical treble would be. So it's a treble plus a chain one space so we cannot forget that that's there. So we're just going to single crochet ourselves across and here's the treble right before this chain five space. You're going to go into that. This is, the top one is considered a chain one space so go right into the gap and then the next one over which is the fourth spot up in the chain, you're gonna go right into the chain not to the gap space and finish it off with a single crochet. If you go into a gap space it's not gonna sit pretty and it's not gonna look great. So this is what it looks like now row number three and we're now going to go with row number four and in row number four we're going to be changing where these trebles are by shifting them over and we do that right at the very beginning of the line. Let me show you how to do that. So let's turn our work and go for repeat pattern our number row number four. So we're going to this time, last time we chained up five. This time in row number four you only chain up four. So one, two, three, four. So there's your treble. 
So in this row, row number four, you're gonna come directly into the next stitch and treble in. And this is gonna cause the gapping spaces to shift. So now you're going to chain up one, skip one, and then treble into the next. So these ones here, when you go to do it, and wait till I pull my hands back, you'll see that it's directly in the middle of what is in these two here. So chain one, skip one, and treble into the next. So I'm gonna just continue now to do that all the way across and I'll meet you at the end because the end is gonna end slightly different because of the way that we started. And that's just really easy so don't fret about it and I'll see you back there in just a moment. So I'm coming up near to the end of row number four and I've been just skipping my stitches. I'm exactly where I need to be but then the ending is slightly different. So we're gonna just chain up one. We have three stitches left. We're gonna skip one as normal and we're just gonna treble into the next which is the one right be before the end. So that's one and then we treble directly into the next one. So that's all it is. So we started that way on this particular row and we finished that way and by just shifting over the very first time it allows you to have the luxury. So one of them will have a big gap right here. The other one will be slightly pulled in and this allows for these to be in sync. So you're gonna turn your work and you're gonna go back to row number one. So what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna create two blocks that are identical to each other. So just two panels. Mine's gonna be 29 inches high for my extra small to medium, 31 inches high for large to extra large and 33 inches high for two to five extra large. So this red line is exactly where this is and then what we're gonna do then is that in the next part of this tutorial I'm gonna, I physically have to do these samples. So I'm gonna meet you back up. We're gonna do the back first cause that's so simple and then I'll show you how to do the front which has a little bit of shaping but nothing a serious to worry about so it's all pretty good. So let's uh, re, uh, let's uh, take a break here and when I come back probably in a day or so I will have this uh, done for you. Of course it's gonna be right here on the same tutorial. So just stay tuned. Here it comes. So I've now finished both of my panels up to the 29 inches where I'm going to start then doing the back and the front of each of the panels. So what I'm gonna do is that when you were working your way up you would have had loose ends. So you would have, uh, you can't use one ball to go all the way to the top. There's not enough yarn in a ball. So to get rid of those loose ends because it's thicker yarn you could try weaving it into the stitches but the chances are it's gonna, uh, it's not gonna hold because it's a really beautiful yarn. It's not one of those type of yarns where the, the plies can split. So using a sharp um, darning needle I need you to work your way carefully through the stitch work and this will actually separate the plies. Okay it will go right through and drag these loose ends right through and if you go back and forth three times it's gonna be a little bit difficult to get them through because it's gonna be nice and thick which is perfect. It's what you want. You don't want things falling out. I want you to go back and forth. You can probably just probably do two of them in th with this particular yarn instead of going with three but you know if you're already here you might as well do the three and just go back and forth three times. Just be very careful not to poke yourself with the sharp needle and then Here's my third time going across. So any of the loose ends that you dealt, dealt with including the bottom that you started with I would recommend that you probably just uh, do this with a darning needle. Just take your time and then get it in and stretch everything out. Once you have that gone in three times all you can just do then is just trim right down to the project and you will barely see where you stopped and started. So continue to do that with all your loose ends and I'll see you back here and we're gonna start the top part of the back panel first. So let's begin to do the top of the back panel. So the back panel and the front panel are a little bit different from each other. The back panel is really quite straightforward. It's just three rows I believe of just single crochet. And we're just gonna go back and forth. So that's what we're gonna do here. And then we're going to pull up the other one. So both of them at the 29 inch mark for the extra small to medium that I'm doing it will be exactly identical until this point. So I've suggested to you that you get yourself to this. So I have a yarn ball attached to each one of the panels so that I can continue. And what I'm gonna do now with back panel we're just gonna con continue along with that. Also what we have here is we have the eight inch mark. So once we get uh, these panels done what we're going to do is then measure up from the bottom and we're going to create the um, stitch marker because we're gonna soap in this point all the way to a designated point. So the sides for the armholes depending on the size whether it's extra small, large or two to five extra large it's either ten inches 11 or 12. So it's just gonna be measuring down but we need to put those together before we even take that measurement. So let's begin to do the back panel next. 
So when I last left you both of the back panels were identical to each other. I laid them down on the table to make sure there was some right now amount of spaces and now I'm ready to completely finish this panel. So we, we should be stopped right here. There should not be a single crochet line at all uh, at this moment. So we're gonna apply that now and both of the panels will be looking exactly identical to this right now. So you're going to just chain up one and then one single crochet into the top of the treble and then one single crochet into the chain one space. Okay, as you work your way across. So what I want you to do, I've already shown you how to single crochet on this tutorial. So just go back and forth three times in order to create this and then I want you to fasten off and I want you to weave in your ends completely. Put this panel aside and then pull up the front panel. So just single crochet for this row, one more row and one after that. So just a total of three rows and you're done this particular panel. So I've now just finished the top. What you're gonna notice here is that the top, when we did the bottom band, you'll see how there's, there's an extra row of single crochet. So if you're getting confused on which is top and which is bottom, the bottom has more of a band than the top. Okay, so what I want you to do on this particular panel, um, I want you to measure up eight inches and then from the bottom and mark it with the stitch marker. So if this is the bottom. So if you notice in the model this she's not sewn all the way down. So what you're going to do is that what I would recommend is put these on a table side by side, measure up eight inches and you'll get it and all you just gotta do is just follow this line all the way across to the other side and you'll be able to mark the other side here. So see, so it's over here just follow the line over there and if you lie them side by side because it's such great yarn is that you won't, you'll only have to measure once and then you can just uh, get the eight inches that's on both of the panels. So let's move along to doing the front panel and then we're gonna do the assembly next. So we're now about to start doing the top. So what I have here for a red line is not indicating that you should go all the way across. This is just a visual and so if I was to tell you just to stop right there. Okay, so what we're gonna do is that we're going to create these that go over top of the model's shoulders. And so what you're going to notice is that there's gonna be amount of stitches that you're going to start. So you're just gonna pick up the yarn where you left off and you are just gonna single crochet yourself over and if it's the small size it's uh, 16 stitches. It's, if it's the large it is um, 20 and the next one is 27. So what we're just gonna do is that we're gonna chain up one and then just go for those particular dimensions and then turn around and come back. And we're only gonna do three rows like we did over here. Then what you're going to do is that we're going to fasten that off and that's done. Now here's the thing. You cannot turn around this project and then start the 16 here. It says to count over so many stitches. I wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend coming and counting from the other side and coming back in. But because we're starting here, okay, the stitches are gonna go up, over, and up. If you start on the outside, it's gonna come up over, over, over. And what is the difference is that crochet on the good side and the bad side look completely different of each other. So if you start this side and go this way and you start this side going this way, this line here is going to look upside down. It's not gonna look like it's the same. And so this strap then will look wrong. So you're gonna start here, go boom, 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 finish off and then the next one you start here. So what I would recommend is that whatever we're gonna count across, in my case it will be 16, I'm gonna count back at 16 and then start here and then boom, boom, boom and both of these straps will look completely identical. So let's begin the top of the first strap. So this is the strand that was still attached to the panel and that's the strand I wanna work with. So I'm going to chain up one and we're gonna do one single crochet into each stitch plus chain one space. Now for the size that I'm doing is small, it's 16 stitches across. So we're gonna count if it's a bigger, uh, it's gonna be 20 and then the biggest size is 27. So you wanna count those physically as you go so you get it right. So let's just start in the very first treble in the very top. So this is one and I'm gonna count out loud and two is the space, three is the treble, four, five, six, and seven, eight, halfway there, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So I've got my 16 in there. I've satisfied there is the length of the, uh, the top shoulder. So now I wanna turn my work 
and I want to do up the other side. So we're gonna turn our work and just chain one. Let's put our hook back in. So chain one and then one single crochet into each. So I don't need to count anymore. I can just go right to the end. So I can speed up. So this is row number two. So this was row number two coming all the way to the end. This is the last stitch. And let's turn our work one more time and go up for a third row. So chain one, one single crochet into each. So once we get all the way across in this uh, row we're gonna completely um, um, fasten off. But what I would strongly recommend is that because this is the second panel that we're doing leave an extra long strand maybe about maybe about two feet of yarn uh, onto your project and what you can just do instead of actually having to feed new yarn you can use that yarn to be able to create the sewing in order to bring the back and the front panel together. So I'm now almost to the end. Okay so there's my end and so I'm just finishing here but I'm gonna cut about two feet of yarn. It's probably a little bit too long but that's okay and I'm going to wrap the hook and pull through and I'm gonna pull through that and I'm gonna leave that on here and I'm gonna use that as my strand then to attach it to the back panel. So let's uh, move along to the next part project. So here's where you should be looking at. This is the way we started. It was on this side of the project. So we are just going to shift to the other side and let me show you what to do. In the instructions it says to count from where you left off the amount of stitches and they're over. But the fact is is that if you've screwed up in any way and you're off by one stitch here you're going, your neckline is not gonna be centered. So what I'd recommend is coming from the other side and counting back. So in my case remember it was 16. It could be the other sizes that you had which was 20 and or 27 I believe. Is that what it was? Yes, 16, 20 or 27. So count back. So let me just count back and I'm gonna count from the edge. So I'm just gonna count it by twos because it's a treble plus a chain one. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen and sixteen and that 16 is including the gapping space. So what I want to do is in this gapping space I want to join on my new yarn. So I'm now gonna attach the yarn and I'm just gonna create a loop and I'm gonna use a darning needle to sew this in uh, on the other side. So just create a loop over so there's no ties on it. Let the straggler just fall down in front and chain one and single crochet into the same space. So I'm gonna use a darning needle to hide this in later. So that was in a space so all I'm just gonna do is work my way down. You can also just hide your uh, loose ends by just going right up over top of it as well. So just so it looks like it's on the top of the line and that's a great way to bury it in as well. So you're gonna go all the way to the edge of the shoulder. And I have a really long tail there that's kind of convenient. This yarn is kind of really interesting. It's impossible to split the plies on it because of the way that it's made. So I think this is a very durable project. Um, I think it would be a great learning yarn too if you ask me. So um, here we come coming to the end. So this is row number one of three that we have to do. Make sure you go into the final space and then to the fourth chain. Okay. Remember there was a chaining of five there to create that. So let's turn our work. Go for row number two. So here is our shoulder right here. Chain one. Okay and we have one single crochet into each just until we get across the shoulder area. Sure. And then Okay so this is the last one here. This is row number two. Again turn our work. Chain one, one single crochet in each. Once you get all the way to the other side I want you to fasten off but I want you to leave an extra long tail maybe about two feet long again and that'll be the yarn strand that we're gonna use to put the shoulders together at the top. Okay I'm now at the very end and this is, this is it so I'm gonna cut about two feet of yarn and then I'm just gonna pull it through the loop and I'm gonna use that string later then to attach. So both now I have the strapping at the top for both and now we're ready to start attaching it to the other panel. So both panels are now in front of me and I have the one that is uh, that the strand is in and then I have the other one right in front of me. So what I want to do is that I wanna match these stitches together. So each stitch 
equals each other. So I'm gonna come straight uh, directly across to the first stitch and then back into the original stitch. You don't need to go between the plies. You can go right actually into the stitches itself. This is called the whip stitch where we just jump right over top and we're just gonna pull everything together. Once you have that stitch together just advance to the next set of stitches. So there will be a, a just jet right across. Just sandwich it together and just whip stitch across. Now you don't wanna pull it too tight because then it'll make the top of the shoulder buckle. So you just wanna be generous with it. You wanna be firm but you don't wanna be like you're tying down something like a boat or something to a dock where it cannot move. So you just wanna be a little bit gentle about it but you wanna be firm. And what we're going to do then is that once I've committed now that this is my whip stitching side, I'm going to whip stitch again. Just follow it straight across, whip stitch the other side. And when I whip stitch I'm gonna keep these together as well. And then when we're done this project we're gonna flip the project uh, inside right or outside right. <laughs> this is the inside of the project that we're currently working on. So we wanna flip it the other way and then these seam lines will be then underneath the clothing on the on the uh, facing the model instead of actually facing us the public. So just continuing to whip stitch across and I'll show you how to weave in these ends at the end. Um, I'm only gonna show this one time so you're gonna do this exactly for the other shoulder as well. Again you because your stitch counts are right and because it's so easy to tell in this yarn you just gotta match your stitches as you go. I am going to demonstrate on how to put the sides together because you gotta make sure you watch the sides because they're not as clean cut as these stitches here at the top. So now coming up to the very final stitch right here because it's the final here on the strap on the other side and all I just wanna do then is that I wanna just tie this. So just feed it back through and kinda create a tie. This stuff is gonna be amazing for you and what I would recommend is that we're going to go in and out of the project so just going in a different path and just gliding it along. Do not go to the other side of this project. This is the inside of the project when the model's wearing it so you don't want any loose ends hanging out on the front end. So just gliding it across. Just take your time. This stuff is pretty uh, this stuff is gonna be amazing once you're done. It's nice and firm to work with. You wanna make sure that before you get everything done just kind of pull things out or like just make sure everything's relaxed before you go in the other way and then again you're gonna go back the third time to be able to get that end in. So it doesn't bother me that that's really stiff to get it through. Again a, a sharp darning needle is really recommended in this case. So I'm gonna show you how to start the other shoulder in just a moment and then I'm gonna show you, how demonstrate the side and then I'm gonna leave the rest for you and then what we can do is, is then just finalize everything together. Now we're gonna start the other side. Now the other side of the strand when we finished was actually here in the center point and that makes sense because the other one was right on the edge. So what we have to do is that we have to be very careful here because remember that we had 16 stitches when we counted. You could have 20 or 27 and what I wanna do on this side is that I wanna count back. So I wanna count to 16 on this side. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. That is the matching partner for this stitch on the other side. So I'm gonna go into that stitch and then back over to the original. So that's my starting point. And all I can just do now is just like what I did before just advance one stitch at a time in whip stitching directly across and I want you to do that all the way to the end and then fasten off and weave in your ends and that should be good to go. So that's a great way to be able to find the matching partner without just eyeing it up but physically counting it so that you know you're sure. So when we come back then I will have that, this done and then I'll show you how to weave up or how to sew in one of the sides. Now just sew in the top and this is the whip stitch side so the other side is the good side when the model is wearing it. You can see it's pretty much an invisible item. So what we want to do is we wanna take a tape measure now that it's folded in half and what I want to measure down is 10 inches from the top of the seam down. Now this is for the small size so if you have a, a next size up it's 11 and the next size up is 12. So taking your tape measure just measure down and this is such an easy going project. You don't wanna like stretch it crazy. You just wanna let it stay in the relaxed position because uh, when the model's wearing it or when you're going to wear it you're going to have it stretch automatically on its own. So I'm determining that the 10 inches mark is right there. So I'm taking a, a crochet hook and I'm going to mark it with a stitch marker 
and I'm gonna match it to the other panel on the other side and that's where the armhole is going to start uh, and then work its way down to the bottom. So this is going to be the space for the armhole right where that 10 inches was. Okay, so here's the armhole right here and then what we want to do if you haven't already done it from the bottom there eight measure eight inches up and then mark it. So this area here all the way here is just gonna be where it's gonna be sewn together. Now you gotta do the same on the other side but here's a trick. You've already just done one. This yarn is so thick just follow it across. Just follow, follow, follow. Follow it across and you're going to get to the other side. So I wanna make sure that we're gonna match it in the right spot right here. So you know you could measure it but why not eye it up when you have opportunity right? You can save time. So mark these two, put them together so that you can start together and then now both sides have now been marked and this is the armhole for the other side. So this um, here is a really great way. Now there is a back and front to this so you're looking at the back right now and I can tell because the seam is here and it's going all the way across and the other side is just slightly coming in. So this shows that it's the front side and the other side. Let me show you how to uh, sew up on the sides. So starting at the eight inch mark coming from the bottom I'm gonna start here and I mark them both. And the eight inch mark was right in this big chain space. So what I recommend is that just move to the next single crochet. It just makes sense and then just put your yarn through and just match it to the other single crochet on the other panel right directly back and what I want you to do is that I want you to put a slip knot on the other side of the string that is attached to your darning needle and when you get it close like I'm about to feed that yarn thing through and what you can just do is tie it or just pull it and it will tie itself shut and then you can use a darning needle to hide that in. So all you're just gonna do is work your way and match. You can be a little bit generous. You don't have to be too um, like every stitch has to have something. Um, you can be a little bit flexible with that. Make sure that when you go to sew this together that you're not going to create any tension meaning that you're gonna pull it too tight. Okay you want it nicely draped like the rest of the project. So you just kinda wanna be firm but you don't wanna be like you're reefing down on it. So just continue to go across. You can go into gapping spaces or you can go into the fibers itself. Again that's kind of your personal choice on what you wanna do and just completely pull it around like this. So what I want you to do is that I want you to completely work your way up and because you know you can be a little bit loose now but you can just pull on it a little bit later and it will tighten things up as you go and uh, this is how you're going to put it together. You wanna do this side and this side and then once you're done you can then take it, uh, <laughs> you can take it and put a steamer on it and get the stitches to relax and then this project is good to go. So I'm gonna leave the rest of this project for you to be able to finish and please enjoy and just uh, do the other seam just like you just saw this one being done. It's both the identical to each other and uh, this is a great little project uh, in order to complete and I think that you can enjoy it uh, wearing it at the same time. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Let me show you a photograph of my finished item and have a great day and we'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.